So what we're wanting to do today is to explain to you how you can use e D of E to create your own um, uh, root cards so you're not having to do it by hand, uh, which is much, much easier. So the first thing you need to do is to sign into your e D of E account. And to, if you've forgotten your password, don't keep guessing it because it will block your account. Just click forgot password and then sign in. What you'll then come up to is your um, e D of E page where it will have all the um, awards you've done. So whether you've done gold, silver and bronze, which is what this person's done. Uh, you need to go to your expedition section and then under the expedition section is mapping. If you then click on mapping, what then happens is that the mapping section comes up. Uh, you need to go to create a new map. So this is an example, it depends where you're going to be. So we're going to call this Little Ooze 1. Uh, add map description, you could put what level you're doing, but I'm just going to put D of E there. I'm going to then uh, create a new map. It then asks to open a new mapping. I always go yes, because that just makes life easier for me. So opening up a new map, a new page, and you'll get the whole of England. So you need to know where you're going to be doing your expedition to start with. Oh, it's gone and done a drop pin. So if anything goes wrong, just do a remove. What you want to do is to have the area where you're going to be doing your expedition in the middle of the screen. So I know I'm going to be starting the expedition near Ely, so I'm going to start there. I then go across to the side where I've got this slide ruler, and I'm going to click to make it smaller. Now I've come in uh, too big, so I'm just going to go out again, because it's come in too quickly for me. I need to try and get Ely right in the middle. So if I come over here, just going to make it a bit smaller again. It does tend to do this, so you've just got to get it. So I've got Peterborough coming up the top there. That's great. I know that Peterborough is just to the west of where I'm going to be. So you can see that I'm clicking on the map and I'm then just pulling it over. So I do that a few times until I see where I'm going. So I've got Denver there and then I then need to come down here to Brandon. So if I get Brandon in the middle, I then need to now make the whole thing bigger so that I can see it. Now, what you may find is you've ended up like this. You look down here, you've got this hamburger. If you click on that hamburger, it then changes the map. You don't want to have the map standard, you want the map standard plus OS leisure. So I'm just gonna click onto that, and it will then turn itself into a normal OS map. You know, because we will have told you in a letter where you're starting your expedition from, that you're going to be starting from Hockwold, if that's where you're starting. That's the example we're using today. So, I've got Hockwold in the middle. I'm then going to go up to the top where I can then plot it. So if I click on plot, I can then come back to where the start is. So, you're obviously doing a canoe expedition, you're starting on a river, I'm going to put a click in there. Now you'll see over on the uh, left hand side that a route has come up. If I move that down, you'll see I can then edit it. The reason why I want to add this in now is if I add the edit in now, it will then enable me to uh, add that to my route card. So my first edit is, where am I starting from? I'm starting from the campsite uh, and just for here a location is at Hockwold is where I'm starting. It's the first one, not really that important. What's really important though is, is that you save it because that's starting your expedition. The next thing you're going to do, so you can see there that you've got sluices. That's something to definitely have a look at. So here, if I go down the little arrow that's there, if I open that out, I can then edit that again and then I can put a comment in here. So I can put sluices here, um, and then uh, there, something to check out. So check out, and it's actually amazing, it's the cutoff channel, uh, which takes water all the way from Cambridge and all the rest of it, all the way down to Essex, because they don't have enough water. So important again to save it. Then I can continue. What's important is that I follow the river, because if I don't follow the river, you'll be paddling much further than you think they are. So a couple of dots, and then I've now got to that bridge. Again, over here onto the uh, left-hand side, 
I've now just got to edit that because that's going to be my first checkpoint. It's up to you where you put your checkpoints in, but they need to be places that we as uh, supervisors can get to. So bridges or roads that come next to the river are quite useful. So that's going to be checkpoint one. What is checkpoint one? So it's the road bridge of the uh, B1112. Again, I save it. Now what I can then do is I keep it all the way down here, uh, all the way along, all the way along, and I keep going until I then get to something else which I think is going to be useful for a checkpoint. Because I've now hit the edge of the map, I now need to push the map over. So by just pulling it like that, I can then move down. So I can click all the way along here. And then the next place, which will be easy as a checkpoint, is where this cow's drove comes in. So having got to here, I can then click onto this here. I can then open that up and I can edit it. So this is going to be my checkpoint two. Here we go. What is checkpoint two? Checkpoint two is Cowell's Drive. Okay, and I can save that. Now obviously what I can now do is to go all the way along, right along the river until the position that we've told you where you're ending, which is going to be there. I'm not going to do that for you, we've done that before, so I'm just going to flip over to one that we've already done it on. So this is the one that we'd saved before. So here's the one that I've saved before. So you can see, this is one we've done before, all the way along. I've completed it right the way through, right until the checkpoint at the end. And at each of the key locations, I've put things. So having a look here, what are the things that are important? You can see checkpoint five, if I open that up, you can see what's in checkpoint five, what I've edited there. So it tells you checkpoint five is a junction with the Great Ooze and the important thing there is you've got to turn left. We have had people who've decided not to do that and have turned right. We've then chased them. So having gone all the way down your river, putting checkpoints in at places which you think are obvious, right? So definitely bridges, you want to have three or four checkpoints every day, all right? Once you've done that, what's great is now is you can go to this, um, tab at the top which is called route card. When you open up that tab amazingly your route is all there. So just scrolling down this is the route that you've already done and it's automatically populated it. Well automatically populated most of it. Let's go through from the top. So part of the route card you need to put the aim of your expedition. Every DV's expedition has to have an aim. We've put in here to document local history. You need to put in the names of the people that are going on the expedition with you. We will have given your group a name and a number. So uh, every Joy of Adventure, J-O-A Expedition, has a group number. You will know what your group number is. Um, I'm your supervisor, so Joy Martin. And at the bottom of every email from me, you will see my phone number. So you can add that in there. Team name, make up your own team name. You can call yourselves whatever you like. Surprise, surprise, we're Team Pink. Um, you've got to choose your setting off time. So for bronze, you know you're doing six hours of activity, silver is seven, and gold is eight. So work out what time you want to get to the campsite as to what time you want to leave at. You may also want to check what the weather and the wind is doing, because if the wind is against you in the afternoon, you might want to set off earlier in the morning. Um, date, you know the date of the start of your expedition, and you'll also know how many days your expedition is and then you will set the level at which you're doing. So you know if you're doing bronze, silver or gold. This is something that you do need to look at. We're going to assume that every expedition, because your uh, canoeing expeditions, are going to be going at four kilometers an hour. It may be when you're on the river, you go much faster because the uh, river's flowing. We can adjust that as you go, uh, but D of E need you to do a route card. So we're going to set it at four kilometers an hour. It may also be if there's lots of wind against you, you may go less. 
So coming down here to how DOV have populated the root card. So this is a silver expedition. You need to have done at least seven hours of activity. So how do you um, get to the seven hours if the route that you've planned is less than seven hours? Well, the first thing you need to do, you need to add in some rest. You need to have lunch at some stage. So you can see I've put in um, at uh, half past 10, I've put in a 15 minute lunch break. Um, and then a bit later, two o'clock, I've put in a half an hour um, uh, lunch break. Um, and then I've done a 15 minute uh, tea break later on. OK. Um, if you uh, then need to look at your map and see if you're only doing seven hours, but your root card is saying you're doing five, you need to flip back to your map and see what else can you go and explore? What are the things that look interesting on your map? So it may be that this area here, where you've got checkpoint two, there's actually the whole of Cowles Drive, and that's a beautiful, uh, well, in fact, the area opposite is a beautiful um, RSPB area. So you could go for a walk along there. It may be along here, you think, ah, oh, what's that mask there about? So you could actually leave your boats, walk up to the mask, and come back again. And that's two hours, which is why our route card has gone up to over eight hours. But it's up to you what you want to explore. What's really important is that if you're on a bronze expedition, your total um, route card time has to be six hours, for silver it has to be seven hours, and for gold it has to be eight hours. So I'm going back to the route card again. You'll notice that at the top of it, it says escape routes, okay? So that means if something goes wrong while you're uh, canoeing down the river, where can you get to a road easiest? Okay. So going back again to the map and having a look at where we've got our checkpoints. Well, the first checkpoint was at the bridge. That's easy. You can just say bridge is the uh, checkpoint there. Next checkpoint was down here at Cows Drive. And again, Cows Drive. So anywhere along this section, you would go river north because that's where this track is. OK, looking a bit further along the river, you can see that there's a yellow road here. So if something goes wrong while you're coming along this section, you want to get off the river onto uh, the river that's on the, the south side of the river. So that's what we've written here on your escape routes. Back to the campsite, back to the campsite, to the bridge, Cowles Drive, road to the south. So what's really nice about this is that you've uh, got a really neat route card. Um, it's all really clear and it's exact on the amount of time you've got to do. So total route card time was eight hours. They've had an hour of um, uh, rest time and they've had actually two and a, nearly two and 40 minutes time of actually um, exploring. So you could make that less. The choice is yours. What's really, really important now is that you save that, okay? Because once it's saved, then you can then uh, export it and use it. So going back to the map section, so clicking back up here on the route card, I can then go, instead of save here, because I've already saved it, I then go to print. When it comes to print, we don't need you to print the map. What we need you to do is to print the route card, and the route card, as you can see, is landscape. So if I then go to the bottom and I tick print and preview, it says it's requesting the map. We know it's not. We know it's requesting the root card. There's my root card. Um, I don't want to print from here because you can see that it's, going, it's not going to print properly. What I need to do, and because you need to send them to us, you need to go to the print uh, as a PDF. So if you go click on that one, we hope it's then going to save it for us. There we go. So it's now come out really nice, really neat. Um, now we've got over 100 people doing expeditions. What we don't want is have all the route cards come to us just saying they're expedition route cards. We need you to have them sent through to us with your name on it. So whatever your group is. So I'm going to save it here under Joy of Adventure. I'm going to save it here as day one group. group one. Call yourself pink, you could put that in there. And make sure that then when you then save it, when you then go on to do your next day, you do day two group, whatever you are, so that then when you send them through to us, we know that this is your group 
and it's really easy for us then to send off to D of E because D of E want to know, um, uh, will want to have your root cards. So that's um, how the root cards work. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, we will put it into a Word document as well, but hopefully you will find that this is going to make life much easier for you whenever you're uh, doing your root cards.